my name is Joss, I'm from Edub Services and today we're going to be talking about how to uh, uh, wire one of these Orion battery management systems. So first of all one of the things you want to be talking to with this Orion is essentially one of your batteries. So this is a high voltage battery, it's called an LG, it's a 2.6 kilowatt hour battery module coming out of a Jaguar IPEX. Uh, so one of the first things you'll get when you receive one of these battery management systems is a, a bunch of cables that might look way too overwhelming for what you might be uh, expecting. Um, but the, the, they're really quite simple if you break it down. Some of these are superfluous as well. So the main thing that you'll be looking at is this, uh, we call it an Orion loom or a harness. Um, these are high voltage, low current wires. Each of them is going to a cell uh, in your battery pack, whether that's four per module, six per module, etc. Bunch of different configurations that you can get in your battery module. Uh, so, in order to get these wires into your battery module, you will be using one of these for an LG. Uh, others are available, of course. Um, what's really important, and I've learned this from my own mistakes, is to cover up this socket here. Uh, so, that's the first thing I do whenever I take this out of the box. And same with this, I've covered up this, these sockets here, and I've covered up this socket here. Because if any of those two pins touch each other with metal or your finger or whatever, then there is good chance that you will blow one of the fuses inside here, you'll blow one of the fuses inside here, and then they're off back to America to get repaired. So that's just best avoided, really. So obviously you'll need some tools for your conversion in order to wire these in. Uh, we live and die by a lot of tools, but primarily these tools I'm going to talk about now, which are, well, first of all, you've got your iris strippers, which I prefer these generally to the, the, the grabby and pulley ones because they will end up, the grabby part will cut through one of your BMS cables which is a big no-no. Uh, as well as that you obviously have your crimping tools to bend the pins over to grab all the wire in the end. Another great feature of our Orion BMS um, is uh, that it's got a bunch of functionality. It can uh, enable fans, it can pull everything to ground which is what we're doing with our uh, e dub control board here. This is a series of relays and fuses to power basically all the 12 volt stuff in your vehicle. And if the BMS isn't happy for whatever reason, most if not all things will turn off um, to prevent any further damage to the batteries or the vehicle or yourself. Um, so we are using the discharge enable in the Orion BMS that pulls to earth when it's happy. Uh, if it's not happy, none of this will turn on. So that's just one of the great functionalities of the Orion battery management system. Along with the battery management system, you will receive a number of other looms. Um, this is actually, I should forgot to mention, it's a master unit. Uh, it's a master 48 unit, so it's capable of reading up to 48 cells. Uh, you will receive this monstrosity. Uh, so this goes in the side here and it has, like I mentioned before, discharge enable, a bunch of signals to turn it on, uh, as well as that it's got a canvas connection, which you can use to A, talk to it through your laptop. Uh, you can use it to talk to the drive unit, to talk to your charger, to talk to the dials on the front of your display, which is one of the great things that we use it for in our conversions here. Another thing that you'll receive with your Orion battery management system is this the Mr. Loom. Uh, which has a number of thermistors on the end of a pair of wires here, which wants to be strategically placed within your battery box. Alternatively, you can chop the end off and wire them into the pins, just as you have done with your Orion harness. As well as that, you will have two remote lines, which enable the master battery management system to talk to any remote units that are in a separate box, which is really, really useful if you have a split box setup like we often use. Um, and that just means that you can just run these two cables in each of these as opposed to running however many cells you've got in the secondary box. So that's really, really useful as well. The third thing that you'll have on this unit is the current sensor. Uh, so this, this little plug here plugs into one of these, which you will want to put on one of your high voltage cables. Ideally, you put it somewhere in between the batteries and the master contactors, otherwise it won't read the current when it's um, charging or when it's uh, driving. Uh, those kind of, they're mutually exclusive. So you want this in between the battery and the master contactors. Um, another thing I ought to cover is the remote module pinout. This is the equivalent of this for a remote. So you can see it's a lot simpler when you're talking to the remote. It simply turns, sends all its communication down the, to the master whenever it's got any issues or whenever it wants to tell it anything. So uh, these are simply uh, three signals and, and a. The alternative, if you were doing a split box setup, is you would have to run 
some of your high voltage, low current cables through what we call a 19 pin, but one of these really, really secure, really safe um, sockets that you're able to put on the outside of your box to um, enable the master just to talk to many different casings and enclosures of batteries. Uh, I think that's basically all I've got to cover for today. All of these items are available on our website at ewconversions.co.uk. If you have any other questions, uh, there's a contact us page on our website. There's also the comment section down below, so feel free to throw something in there and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Other than that, I've been Josh Lacey. Thank you for watching.